Well, hello crafters and welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. My name is Deepa from Designs by D and today I have three cards to share with you with lots of foiling and shine. So my cards today are featuring the Stylish Ovals Collection by Spellbinders. Now this one is a doozy. I'm going to be using a bunch of different foils and glimmer plates to create these three cards for you and Let's go ahead and have a look at the products we're going to be using. Now the first one is the Infinity Punch and Pierce plate. So there are actually three plates in this. Actually it's one plate but it cuts out three pieces. Then we've got the Fluttering by Glimmer set. So it has this big plate with lots of butterflies and then there's four dies that can cut some of those butterflies out for you. I've also got the Essential Stylish Ovals. So these ovals are essential, as it says, for all of these sets. You can cut out all of the different ovals, just like this one here. This one is the Stylish Ovals Floral Bird, and that's just one big glimmer plate. And then you've also got the Stylish Oval Thanks plates. So this is it right here. You get two plates, one for the oval, one for the thanks, and then you also get a die to cut out the sentiment. Now I'm going to be using three foils here. I've got a teal foil, I've got the light pink here, and then I've also got the lavender petal. Now I'm going to be using the Pink Fresh Studio solid foil plate along with some hammer mill cardstock. So it's important to use that hammer mill cardstock to give you the best impression and the best foiling job. Um, I'm literally going to be foiling out backgrounds. I'm foiling my own metallic cardstock is what I'm doing. So. I'm gonna basically heat up my glimmer machine. I've got my plate on there as it's heating up and that's an important point because this really makes your plate hot enough for foiling. I've cut out three pieces of that hammer mill cardstock. So I've just cut the eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock in half. When I'm foiling or like I'm using the foil in this manner in which to create an entire background or my own custom um, foil cardstock or metallic cardstock if you will I like to use larger pieces of cardstock just so that I don't kind of have to tape the plate to it it's just easier to work with so now I've got my plate all heated up now I let my system heat up about three to five minutes longer than when that green light first showed up and once that's done I added my foil my paper and then my shim I've got an extra piece of cardstock there that's folded in half and then my spacer pad. I've set the timer. Now that I've let it, um, uh, the timer completely run out, all the lights are solid, I then put it through my die cutting machine and reveal the final paper. So I started peeling it back and I can see the little bit of a foil is lifting. So I wanted to let it cool completely. Now that that's done, I've pulled it off. Now you can see that I've got great coverage here. There is a little bit of foil missing, so it's not 100% perfect, but that's okay because we're gonna be doing some die cutting with it. You're not gonna notice. Now I'm doing the exact same thing with the lavender petal foil, and then I'll do the exact same thing with the teal. Now for the teal here, I'm letting it cool a bit and then again, pulling this off. So I would say that to get a perfect impression here, as you can see, I used the shim. I waited it for it to heat up longer. And I think the biggest tip is to wait till your, um, your paper is cooled to lift off that foil. So now I'm going to grab that Infinity Punch and Pierce plate. Now Spellbinders has been coming out with a lot of these Punch and Pierce plates, which are absolutely gorgeous. I always thought, you know, it takes too much time to punch everything out. But look at this. Look at how that turned out. It by itself is stunning. I don't even really need to do too much more. So for one of my cards, I will just keep it using the Punch and Pierce plate and all of the center pieces. And for the other two, I'm just going to use that outer frame. So I'll go ahead and cut out the other two. You can see how these look. They're absolutely stunning. Now with these punch and pierce plates, I do recommend using um, a metal shim. It just helps your cutting. You're gonna have less uh, bits to poke out and all of that, and it's just gonna be much easier for you. Um, so moving on, I'm gonna do some more foiling. Um, I have the, um, the thanks set here. And I'm using that with the lavender petal foil. I'm setting all of that up on my cardstock. And I'm doing the same with the teal foil for that one. I'm using the, um, the set with the little bird, the floral bird. And you can see as I pull the foil off one by one how gorgeous these look just on their own. Now, these essential oval dies come in handy here. So now I can cut out these two ovals and they're actually different size. So if I wanna fit in this uh, floral piece here with the butterflies, I'm gonna use the fourth largest. So from the largest 
die counting in number one two three four i'll use that fourth die for this one and it gives me a nice border around the edge so i don't cut off those little flowers and then i'll use the third one in for this one here sorry not the third the fifth one for the bird so i've used the fourth and fifth counting in from the outer or the largest die and then i also have the coordinating die for the thanks sentiment so I'll just set those aside and moving on I'll get to my butterflies here these fluttering by butterflies now I'm going to be using some prison foil for this one which is going to go great with the rest of the um, the pieces because they are so shiny and this is just going to shine all the different colors of the rainbow I've gone ahead and I folded it on some more hammer mill cardstock I got a bit of under foiling but that's not a big deal I'm not using the entire panel I'm actually gonna take those smaller butterfly dies and I'm just gonna cut some of these out here so I only really needed to foil this panel once I'm not gonna show you all of the cutting but um, I think I cut out in the end about 16 or 18 different butterflies that from this one panel that we foiled so you can see it works perfectly for this um, so I'm gonna just put these cute little butterflies aside and these are just gonna be like something a little extra to put on my final cards now for my sentiments I have two sets here I'm actually using the um, hello friend sentiments glimmer hot foil plates and I'm also gonna be using the wonderful script sentiments because they work both very well together you can use that to cut out these larger sentiments here and I also have the inside card glimmer sentiments. I was going to use that. I did end up foiling it, but I didn't end up using it. So I usually foil just the sentiments I want. This time I decided to foil everything. And you can see that it, it turned out okay. The bigger sentiments are perfect, but some of the smaller ones kind of got nudged away. That's okay. I'll find out how to cut these in order to make them work for me. But in the meantime, I can go ahead and cut out those larger sentiments. Now, as I mentioned, the die set wonderful script sentiments work perfectly with these foiled sentiments they line up the dies line up perfectly and you can cut those out here now I did have a bit of over foiling and I would recommend that if that happens please 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 do not throw your product or your, your final image away you can fix it and I'll show you how okay so take a look at this here on the wonderful at the L there's a lot of over foiling here okay on the camera it doesn't look as much in real life it's kind of messy so I'm just using this um, this eraser tool here to kind of clean it off you could also use a Tombow mono eraser works perfectly as well and you can see it's completely cleaned up here so I used black foil which is gonna make a big difference on your white cardstock and you can see I can clean that off with the eraser so it's really not something that you have to worry about too much so don't throw those away I hate doing all that effort foiling and then being like oh crap I have to do it again and throw this away no you don't always have to do that get that eraser and you'll see that it works wonders for saving your projects okay so now that I've taken care of all that over foiling I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling these cards so I've already cut out three a2 sized white card bases they're all side folding and now I'm taking those punch and pierce um, pieces that I cut out earlier from that homemade or that custom made cardstock that we made with the foil and for the pink I'm just gonna put all three pieces from that punch and pierce plate onto the card panel sorry onto the card base so this one is gonna simply just display that beautiful punch and pierce plate which is absolutely gorgeous on its own now for the teal and the lavender petal I'm just gonna use the outside frame so the two center pieces I still have them left I can use them for another project I'll just keep them aside I have like a box of a bunch of scraps and stuff that I die cut and not use that I use for other projects as I need and see fit so I'll go ahead and attach all of these I find that using this um, what is this the barely arts glue works really well it's not tacky right away it takes a while which is why you do need the acrylic block but that fine tip is perfect for pieces like this where you have a lot of die cut little holes now for the actual oval pieces I'm propping them up with some foam now I've got a piece of foam that I forever use and I just cut out my circles but I never waste that foam so what I'll do for these is I'll just cut out little pieces and prop up these ovals with them you can see I've got all those little bits there and I just 
I find that it doesn't really make a difference if it doesn't um, cover the entire oval. If you've got enough foam on there to back it, it's going to work nicely to prop up your piece without anything kind of buckling in. So I'll just go ahead and add the, the purple oval there and the teal one with the little bird. And once I've got those all nice and propped up, I can go ahead and add my sentiments. Now for that purple one, we've got the thank sentiment, which comes with the set. So I'm just adding some foam strips here and I'll attach that to the center of the card. And you can see the little curvy bits, they fit in so nicely and it works so well with this plate. It's just really cool. I like how the little ovals curve one way and then the other. So that one is pretty much done. Now on the one with the little bird, I've got the hello that we've cut out and I'll just stick those little strips in. Um, wherever they can fit nicely. I love these strips because they're the perfect size, especially for these sentiments that are a little bit finer. They fit nicely in there with the longer strokes of the word. And then I've also got the little sub sentiment, hello friend, and I'll cut that off. Now, if you wanted to, you could add some color to this, but I really just wanted to showcase all of that glimmer foil. I didn't want to take away from it at all. So I'm keeping it pretty um, simple here. And now for the punch and pierce, the complete punch and pierce card, I'm going to be adding um, the beautiful sentiment along with these sub sentiments, wishing you a birthday or something as beautiful as you. And I'll cut these off, the little um, sub sentiment bits. So I've just basically cut a little angled um, piece off there, just so your eyes kind of flow from the first sub sentiment to the center, then to the last sub sentiment. So it all kind of fits together. So those are all three cards. Now let's add these cute butterflies. So this is what kind of amps the card up just a little bit more and adds that extra bit of shine. Not that it needs any. <laughs> So for these butterflies, one point I will note is that I was tempted to kind of bend them so that they have a little bit more dimension and the wings kind of flap upwards. But you have to remember you foiled and when you bend the foiling, you can see all these little crease marks, which don't look that great. So I would recommend just keeping these nice and flat. Uh, which is what I did after I bent the first one and realized it didn't work. And I'm just adding about three butterflies to each card. Now on the last card, I decided to add five. Now you'll notice I'm keeping with the uh, the rule of odds. So I like to keep odd numbers of elements on my cards just because they're more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And um, this is no different, right? So I'm going ahead and adding five to this last one. And then I'll do the exact same thing with that rule of odds when I add my embellishments as well. So I'll just go ahead and fill up, finish up this last card with the butterflies. And when it comes to my embellishments, you can choose a contrasting color if you'd like. That did cross my mind, but I decided to go with colors that are gonna match the foil that I chose. And it turns out that Pink Fresh Studio they came out with those glitter drops. I think they just came out with dual tone glitter drops. Well, I'm going to go back to the original glitter drops because the per the colors match perfectly with these foils. So this first uh, color of glitter drop is the amethyst. You can see it matches perfectly with that lavender petal foil. Then I'm using blossom here. This one matches perfectly with the light pink from Spellbinders. Now in the Scrapbook Pal shop, they don't have this foil, but they do have the matte foils, the soft, um, what is it, the, the pastel tone colors. There's a whole pack of them in these three colors. If you wanted to recreate this, those would definitely be the ones that I'd pick out. Um, I did actually think, thought that I had them at first and then realized I didn't, so I just used these. And then again, for the blue, I used Lagoon Glitter Drops. So these are my final cards for you. I hope that um, this has inspired you to create something similar yourself. And you can see that you can use any of the foils in the same manner to create your own custom cardstock here, especially if you don't um, have the metallic cardstocks or you think they're a little bit too expensive. This is another way you could go about that. So everything that I've used here is available in the Scrapbook Pal store. Everything's listed in the description below. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.